And welcome, everybody, to another live edition of Gridiron Japan. Whoops. Let me... <laughs> let's do it again. <laughs> yeah, let's do it again. Another live edition of Gridiron Japan. It is John and myself joined tonight. We are honored to be joined tonight by the head coach of IBM Big Blue, fellow Bears fan, Mike Fair. How you doing, Mike? I'm doing fantastic, guys. I appreciate you having me on, man. I'm excited. We really appreciate you coming on, Mike. And uh, you're head coach of the Bears now, but you've probably a Bears. Sorry, you're head coach of a uh, <laughs> big blue right now, but you you have one of the most distinguished football backgrounds probably of anyone has ever coached in this country. You, you started off, I think, your career with the Super Bowl ring, right, with the Buccaneers. Oh. Like you started at the top, and and then you you were like Seahawks, Bears, Bucks, Colts, Panthers. I think you Red Blacks. It, in Canada, you've been defensive line coach, but also I know you, you've done a lot of like running game coordinator and different stuff as well. And now you're head coach, obviously, of, of Big Blue. But um, yeah, we're we're honored and we're grateful to have you on the podcast. And, and Japanese football, obviously, is, is lucky to have a coach of your stature. Uh, but before we get into all of like the more modern stuff, can you just tell us where you first discovered, because I know the story, but I'm, I'm sure everyone would love to hear it. Where you first encountered Japanese football. Okay, so I'm going to give you the short version. Um, mm. So, guys, I played at Arizona State. Um, yeah, I was, I was a walk-on there. I ended up uh, getting a scholarship eventually. So I played my whole career there. In my senior year, they basically, our defensive coordinator, his name's Kent Bear. Kent has been bringing out players to he 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 knows Osaka he knows he knows the KG Kyoto like he knows all those universities out there in, in Osaka and so every year he brings out guys six players uh, from a team and and basically they were guys that had no chance of playing in the NFL so they we weren't going to get drafted so he asked me he goes Mike you want to come out to Tokyo you want to come out to Osaka Japan and, and play football um, I said absolutely so he handpicked six of us. We all came out to go play with the KG fighters. And then the other team that they that they picked in, in the U.S. were the uh, Michigan Wolverines. They picked six of their players to go play for Kyoto uh, Gangsters. And so we came out. That was in 1993. So that was after I was completely done with football, came out, came out to uh, Osaka, practiced for about two weeks with KG fighters at their facilities um, you know, and, and, and Michigan did their, uh, practice with, uh, Kyoto. And then we came at the very end to, to, uh, join together at the end. And we played them in the, in the uh, Heisei Bowl. And we ended up beating, um, um, uh, Kyoto and, uh, and just had a, just had a blast. I had the most fun I've ever had. Um, just, you know, with the players learning, you know, and, and a lot of the players were really, they could actually speak very good English. Their football knowledge was excellent. It was like that was something that I didn't know. Um, and so that's when I ended up uh, the, the other linebacker that I was playing with on KG was Shinzo Yamada. So Shinzo and I, we, we were teammates. And so I got to know him back in 1993. And we've been we've been able to stay in contact ever since. Yeah, and Shinzo obviously was head coach of Big Blue for a while. He was director yep. of Big Blue. I think he's head like Scuba University now. Yep. He was like, like you said, a linebacker. He played in the original version of the XFL for yep. the, yeah. I think it was Memphis Maniacs. Was that the name of the team? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, um, yeah, he's uh, one of the gracious linebackers probably in Japanese football history uh it was like I think uh, he played was it when you 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 told me as well you you reconnected with him uh when, was it the 49ers no, yes yeah. no so 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 you got to think about it. after I left after I left Japan in 1983 mm -hmm. well there's no internet right so there's right. no emails to keep in contact you write letters and all that stuff well we didn't we didn't I didn't get it uh get back in touch with him mm -hmm. until now we forward where I go to be a scout for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in 2002. Hmm. 2002 is when I went to be a scout for them. Well, we're going to come over and, and play in Japan, uh, the Tampa Bay against the Jets. Hmm. I can't remember what that – it was just a preseason game. They handpicked 
a jet, two Japanese players, one to play for the Bucks, one to play for the Jets. Who was the player that was playing for the Bucks? Shinzo Yamada. So as soon as I saw his name, I'm like, wait, I know this guy. I know Shinzo. And so I, here I am with the Bucks, and, and we reconnect, and we've kept in contact ever since. Yeah, that was – they used to call that the American Bowl, and it was like a series of games around the world. But I think the Bucks – uh, Buccaneers Jets won in nine in 2003. That was it, was just called NFL Tokyo, I think was the name. They okay. renamed it as NFL Tokyo. It's kind of like a series of NFL. Greg will probably tell you, but like, uh, the very first game in those in that series was called the Mainichi Star Bowl in 1976. Oh and my the gosh. Cardinals, Cardinals came out and it was the first first NFL team ever to play outside North America. Yeah, the Cardinals, the Cardinals and, and the, the Chargers. Game. The Chargers, wow. yeah. They played it. Yeah. Um, they played it. Well, it was you know before Tokyo Dome was built, so they played on the baseball field. Uh, Korakuen, uh, I believe I'm pronouncing that right, right, John? Um, uh, Korakuen, yeah. Korakuen yeah, was state, before Tokyo Korakuen. Dome. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but um, so Shinzo was on. They put Shinzo on the team, right? And then you yeah, on, on the Buccaneers team, uh, and yeah. we had just won the Super Bowl. So you're right. That was 2003. I, I was cor- stand corrected because I went to work for the Bucks in 2002. Right. We won the Super Bowl, and then all of a sudden we're, we're going to play in this game, and we bring a player in, and it's Shinzo. And so it was just really, really kind of cool to uh, tell that story because how long we've known each other, but how we reconnected was uh, was really unique. So it was, it was it was awesome. And after, and so you were with the Bucks. So how long were you with the Bucks for? So I was with the Buccaneers for. Th- so you got to. So I was coaching in college before that. Okay. So my first NFL job with the Buccaneers, I was a scout. I wasn't, okay. they hired me as a scout. And so I wasn't, I wasn't coaching a, a, anymore. And they hired me as a scout. Uh, there it is. Yep. <laughs> there you go. NFL, Tokyo. Tokyo. NFL Tokyo. How did you find that? Oh my God. I, oh, you John, should, yeah. John, 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 John is, John has all uh, the history of American football in Japan <laughs> is at John's place. He's got the library. It's amazing. Yeah. John, I, I got to see that, man. I, I would love that. For, for cool. every helmet that Greg has in his background, I have about like 24 <laughs> pamphlets and yearbooks and, and everything. I'm just trying to see. You were a scout, but I don't know. So I, yeah, I was, I, was, I was an area scout at the time. So that was my, I was I was uh, with the with the Bucks, my first NFL job. And I was with them for three years. Yeah. And then our, one of our, uh, one of our scouts, basically our, our player personnel director, his name's Tim Ruskell. Mm. He left to go with the Seahawks. And he took me with him. So I ended up going to Seattle after three years with the Buccaneers. And then I was a scout for the, uh, for the Seahawks for three years. Mike Holmgren was our head coach. Um, And then, so I scouted for six years and then I really wanted to get back into coaching. And so coach Holmgren took a chance on me and let me, and it's not done very often now to go. Cause usually when you go into scouting, Oh my gosh, there's Shinzo Shinzo there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. How about that? Jeez. Actually, I wanted to ask you before I forget about that. Before that, before sorry for interrupting you, but no, do area good. scouts get rings on Super Bowl winning teams? Oh yeah, we got oh, that. Really? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like it was crazy because like that was my very first year scouting, and so like I would have a lot of scouts been scouting for you know 30 years, and they're like, Mike, this is not normal. Just so you know that, like this doesn't happen all the time. You start so, off as a Super Bowl winner. <laughs> but what was crazy is when it, and so and it, like. I always felt like teams would want to hire me for the first time because when we I went to Seattle, hmm. that first year in Seattle, we went and played the uh, – we played in the Super Bowl again against uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. Oh, wow. So but now we lost, but still it was like my first year. I was like, well, I should just keep switching teams. And just, <laughs> was that that wasn't the uh, we want the ball and we're going to win. Was that the, the, the kick? No, that no. was Green Bay. That was uh, – no. That, <laughs> that was a different one. That was a couple of years before, I think. Yes. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but I mean, uh, that's yeah. It's what an incredible start. Uh, yeah. So when you were as an area scout, then like, so we we get back into the Japanese stuff, but just like this is obviously fascinating as stuff. But uh, like, what players would you have seen? Uh, what, which area of the country were you scouting? So my very first, my very first year scouting, I was, mm-hmm. I, they called it the, uh, the Southwest. And basically okay. they moved me down to Houston, Texas. So I moved my mm-hmm. family down there 
And then I had all of uh, Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Arkansas. I had that whole area. What was kind of weird about or not weird, but what was kind of uh, not difficult, but what was uh, just gave me a totally different exposure because I grew up in the West. Like I grew up in Arizona. So I didn't know the LSUs, the Texas, the, uh, you know, Mississippi State, you know, all the different places. That's when Nick Saban was at uh, LSU as the head coach. So I just got really exposed to a lot of uh, a lot of really cool football, um, really good players. Just it totally gave me a different perspective compared to what I grew up in. And mm. so, yeah, I was able to just see a lot of different places, a lot of different uh, football you know, um, programs and how they ran. So then obviously you went on and you had a long career all over the NFL coaching at, at all those teams we mentioned earlier. And then to Canada. And I'm just wondering how, obviously you said you had your original experience in Japan and then you, you were back here with the Buccaneers, but how in 2023 do you end up back? Uh, I think you, what was your, I think defense consultant, was that your title last yeah, year? Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me, let, can I go back real quick? Sure. So I keep, so Shinzo, when I was scouting, remember mm -hmm. when I told you I was scouting and I really want to get back into coaching, that was in 2005. I was, I had just moved to Seattle or I just moved, got with Seattle. And, and so Shinzo and I are connected. He was, I think he was with IBM at the time. Well, Fujitsu was looking for a head coach and a okay. defensive coordinator. So I, he actually had me fly out in 2005. I interviewed with Fujitsu for their head coaching job. Long story short, they ended up hiring a different guy, but they offered me the defensive coordinator job. Well, at the time I had three kids and they were all young. And so I was trying to figure out like, okay, how am I going to move my family out there? You know, with my kids, they're so young. And I was just, I was trying to figure it all out. And I just couldn't, I couldn't wrap my brain around to be able to see if we could do it. And so um, I ended up, I wasn't able to take the job and I stayed, I stayed in Seattle. And then I got back into coaching in Seattle and then um but I, I'd been coming out here for several years just to help Shinzo out, help, help out, you know, teams, help out players. And then so now I'm in the CFL mm. and that's when um, Shinzo asked me to come out and, and, and meet with, uh, you know, you know, uh, Hanada was out here at the time. He was learning football. Mm. It was able to work with the D line and work with the defensive coaches for for a big blue. Mm. And then they ended up giving me a consulting role. And so I, I, you know, it, with the consulting role, I was still working for the Red Blacks, but I was watching some film and just talking through some things while I was in Canada. And then, um, and then after Canada, you know, I came out here uh, in in December. I came out here for our um, for our Panasonic game for the uh, semifinal game mm. um, that we ended up losing. And then we just talked. To, and, and I knew Kevin. I, I knew Kevin a little bit before Kevin Kraft. Mm -hmm. um, just because I knew his dad, his dad was a longtime coach in the, in, at, at San Diego state and, and, uh, and I'll, you know, a couple of different places down there. So I just, I knew who Kevin was. In fact, I, I, I scouted Kevin, I scouted Kevin when he was coming out, I think he was coming out of UCLA. So, cause I ended up getting the West coast eventually as a scout. Mm -hmm. And, um, so I just, it just worked out. And they, and so they, they talked to me about becoming the head coach here and I'm like, Hey, let's, yeah, let's do it. Let's we can make it work. Let's go. And how has that been? Obviously, you've coached all over at, at you know much higher levels, but not as a head coach. So it's you know it's obviously a very different job. You're in charge of everything. So how, how has it been so far? Guys, I'm just telling you right now, like like some of the things like I thought I knew, I was like, oh man, this is going to be so new. So there were so many things that I, I didn't think about, and I was always the thing is is I always wanted to be a head coach. I was always taking notes and writing down things and how I would do it. And so I did a lot of those things, but there's so many other things that came up um, that I didn't, that I'm, I'm learning on the run. I'm truly learning run. And just check this out. I'm also calling plays on offense. So um, that's, and it's, so it's my first year as a head coach, first year as an offense coordinator calling mm. plays. And now they just, now I'm the GM. So I got a lot of hats I, I'm wearing and I love it. It's been great. It's been it's, uh, at fantastic. some point in there you get some sleep, right? Because I can only imagine. <laughs> uh, no, well, that, well and I'm just telling you guys right now. Probably the biggest blessing that I have right now is that my wife hasn't been here, so mm. I've been able to kind of like right, yeah. do this like full bore 
and meet with guys and all, all that stuff. Now, check it out. Jennifer, my wife, she's coming uh, to Japan this Saturday. She'll be here mm. this Saturday. She'll be here for the, all the month of uh, September. So this will be her first time out here. And um, so, yeah, I'm fired up. I'm fired up for her to be here and, and experience what I'm experiencing. Um, just everything, the people, the players, just I'm, I'm really having a blast. That's Has awesome. she been to Japan before? She, I, I take that before I accepted the job, she mm. came out here with me. We came out here for a week and okay. we met with uh, a Koji, our GM at the time. And we talked through some things, met with Shinzo, spent some time with his family. Um, we went to Disney. We went to Disney and Chiba here. Um, that was a, so we, she got to experience Japan for the first time back in uh, January. And so mm. that was her first and only time coming out. Yeah. Just going back to what you said there, but I, I just realized 2005, you said, was when you interviewed for the Fujitsu job? Yes. I want to say it was 2005. Was that year? Yeah, because that was the year they hired uh, Fujita, Fujita-san. I don't know if okay. you saw that NFL documentary about yeah. uh, Adeyemi. And so, like, Fujita-san was the one who, the coach who, you know, brought brought a team that had lost, what was it, like five, five? an 0 and 5 in championship games never won a title and then turned them into the powerhouse they are now and it's, yeah it's, but it's you know i mean it's just it's it's amazing all these intersecting roads and and paths and players and coaches and who could have been where and who could have played with under who it's it's yeah. a small world really the football world you know i mean people think it's huge but even internationally there's there's whenever you meet a player you start talking to them. There's inevitably somebody that you know. They've they've crossed paths with somebody that you know. I, I always find that with the new players and coaches that come out here, they, there's somebody else who's been out here in the past, that, or they they roomed with them in college, or you know they they were on a practice squad together somewhere. It's like the connections are amazing. So now now that you're a head coach and and you have uh, you're in charge of the the whole shebang, like. Is there going to be wholesale changes at IBM? Is it is it going to be a very different team than the one we saw last year? Or, well, I, I think we'll look different because uh, Kevin had been here so for so long and did, did a great job and did what he was used to as a player and then mm. and then as a play caller and a, as a head coach. Mm. So you know, I think it'll look well. It's going to definitely look different because that was that was the that was probably the biggest thing that I was kind of torn before I took the job. Mm. But right when I took the job, I said, listen, I, I have to go in here and do what I know, like in whether that's whether that's, you know, the right thing. Or the, it's just what I know. And so, like I said, I had, I had kept notes for years of the type of offense I wanted to run, um, you know, the kind of personnel. I, you know, that's where my background in scouting really kind of helped me. Uh, you know, hey, do I want to be a, a big tight end team? Do I want to be a wide out spread them out team? Do I want to be a running game you know, t- type of team? So. I knew kind of like what I wanted it to look like. And then, um, and then really that was kind of my, my whole thing is just to come in here and, and just do what I know. So it'll definitely look different. Um, you know, uh, John Stanton came to our practice the other day, John's a longtime player here. Mm. And, you know, he was laughing. He's like, man, it, it is different. Cause John, you know, and John played tight end. So I was like, right. hey, John, you would love the, you know, you would love the, you know, and he did a great job. And so, but it'll, it'll be different. Um, you know, from the standpoint of just what it looks like on offense, it will be the biggest thing. So as a, as a Bears fan, obviously you're going to implement the T formation and then the 46, right? Ah. So that's, what we're, that's what we're going to be seeing on both that's sides. That's what you'll be seeing, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm trying to You bring it back right? to fullback? Yeah, yeah back of course. Yeah. yeah, we try to always, we're always <laughs> looking for a fullback. But you know what, guys, I mean, seriously, because that was like like something I really had to kind of go back in my background. And and I, I tell people this all the time, the six years that I scouted for mm-hmm. and learned about how to put together a team, because I had no idea. I've been coaching for years, mm-hmm. but and I've recruited kids and all that stuff, but I really had no idea in how to put together a team. And that was the cool thing that I was able to do in scouting, because now I don't I didn't have to coach. Now I can just sit back and learn. But the coolest thing is when I was a scout, I was going to now I had the West Coast. So I ended up getting the West Coast uh, eventually when I went to Seattle. So now I was going to see in USC when Pete Carroll was there. I was going to see Bobby Houck at, at University of Montana. I was seeing all these different places, Wyoming, just Utah, University of Utah, what they were doing. Um, and so I was able to see a lot of different ways of got, how they practice, how the coaches set up the practices. 
And I, I literally, I was taking notes the whole time just saying, like, these are things I would do. And so I, I took bits and pieces of things that I really liked and just mm. tried to put it in, in my philosophies and, and, uh, and implement it in, in what I'm doing now. So obviously in the leagues that you've been in before, the NFL and CFL, there's much more roster turnover like throughout the season as well. You, yeah. you know, players come in and out. Japan, it's not like that, right? You have a single roster for the entire – and you can't recruit in the same way. Uh, you know, you, you can't draft players. It's basically whoever wants to come and play for you, you, you have. So you, you're kind of limited in roster building. You can't really bring in the players that you want the way you could in, in other leagues and other teams. So how how challenging has that been to kind of you have obviously, like you said, you've had this long experience and now you're you're in a position where you can implement all of your own ideas on both sides of the ball and put all these things into practice that you wanted to do. But you only have a roster that you have. You can't change it as such or you can't you can't like make wholesale changes and bring in 20 guys that you know would fit your system. So how challenging is that? And like, how do you work around that kind of stuff? The biggest, so, so kind of two ways to answer the, the biggest thing I tried to do that I tried to bring from my experiences. Um, like I said, from the NFL, the CFL, I tried to bring like a pro, like a pro style type of practice in a camp and how we, how we kind of run things. So I, I told the guys, I said, guys, it's going to be totally different than what you've been used to. Mm -hmm. So just, you got to just stay with me on it and just how we're structured, but you're exactly right. Once I learned about our 63 man roster and it's set, mm -hmm. and this is this is what we have, that's something that I wasn't used to, you know. And, and we still have practice squad guys, so we have a handful of practice squad guys. So like that just means more guys have to help out, like more guys have to give us scouting looks and all that stuff. So that was something that was different for me. Um, I still recruit, I still scout guys the same way from the standpoint of, Hey, I'm evaluating guys. I go to practices. I, I, I spent five days in Osaka going to Kyoto, uh, KG, Ritz Macon, and just really kind of evaluating guys, talking to players, seeing how I would, they would fit us. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, um, those are guys down the road that, that I'm going to be recruiting to try to come to play for us. Um, so that, that was kind of my whole thing. I wanted to get out and go see other colleges. How about this? The head coach for, for KG, Kaz, Coach Kaz, mm. he was my teammate back in 1993 also. He really? was a tight end on that really? team. He was younger than me. So wow. you I mean you just talked about like the I, I mean just the irony of like the connections. The personal, so the, crazy. Yeah, I was gonna say the personal connections. Yeah. yeah. But but kind of go, I'm, I'm getting off topic there, but just mm. I, I really did have to kind of adjust a little bit my thinking. You, you, you know, you can't really, you're not really looking at cutting guys. Um, mm. So we just, we just, but eventually like even this year, that was the hardest thing for me. That, that was, that's, that's no different. Every other place I've been, I do not like cutting guys. Like if a yeah. guy's willing to come play for you like mm. that to me, like he's my guy for life, but like eventually um, you know, we don't cut them. The guys just, we have to put them on a practice squad. And so. Um, because these guys, have, I mean, Mike, because these guys are all making a commitment to the team. Yeah. In essence, they, I mean, they all want to be there. So, um, so how do you, when, with the guys with the lesser skill levels, yeah. with the talent, how do you utilize that? I'm saying, I'm speaking as a former um, practice team member back in yeah. high school. <laughs> how, how, how do you get the, how do you get those guys who, obviously are probably not going to start or even get in the games feeling as part of that, part of that whole team to feel them inclusive of team success. So how does that work? Especially in Japan where you've got, obviously the language is different. The culture is different. How are you going about bringing it? How, how are you going about doing that? I should ask. Yeah. And, I, and that's, that's a great question just because like that was my number one thing. Um, knowing the commitment these guys have, during the week to their jobs, to their families, all that stuff. And then all of a sudden they're coming on their free time on the weekends and practicing with us. Like you can't find guys like people like that, that do that in the U S or no, a lot no. of places like that. The commitment these guys have to come out here and play and the passion. And, the, and when, it, especially when it's hot now, it's hot and humid. I'm not used to this humidity, by the way. <laughs> so, you know, growing up in Arizona, I'm, I'm used to heat, but not it's humidity. a wet heat. Oh my gosh. <laughs> 
but but the thing I that's what I love about these guys, man. And, and and so what I try to do to with them with I don't care who they are or what their talent level is. I'm going to coach the heck out of them, and I'm and that's why I told you I'm going to give them a pro style. What I mean by the pro style, the way we kind of run it, the way I'm running it, and I'm teaching our coaches and I'm teaching our managers and everybody involved. I want to run like a pro style system, so I like it organized. I like to do the a lot of the, I don't I don't. If you come to some of our practices, it's very regimen and how we do things now. But I say regimen, but we have a blast, man. The guys are having fun that you, 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 you hear guys yelling and screaming and just I'm very high energy. I got a lot of those things that, that when I was with Coach, Coach Carroll from watching him practice to working for him when I was in Seattle, I took a lot of things that he did in our in practices. What I what I what I saw, what we did. And I implemented that into our, our system here. And so it does. Everybody talks about culture. It builds a culture. It builds guys wanting to come to practice, wanting to learn. And so that's that's what that's the that's the biggest thing that I love about being here is you just the want to the passion these guys have to, to want to learn. And so I'm giving them everything that I can give them possible that I've, I've basically given everything that uh, any of my knowledge I'm given to them. And so um, they've been fantastic. The thing that you were saying about you never want to cut players, it's funny because literally just before we we jumped onto this, I was watching Hard Knocks, you know, it's with the Bears yeah. this year. And I like I, I think Eric Washington was there when you were there. Yeah. Yeah. As well. So, but I was looking at um the running backs coaches as well, and like and the players that have to be cut and the players that get like it you can see how hard a lot of the coaches take it because you know they especially if you're a position coach, you're investing you got every day with the same small handful of players. So, I mean, it's, it almost becomes like a family. I know family in football is a kind of cliche, but like for, yeah, for, for those like tight it is. Tight groups, it's, it's, yeah. uh, it, it can be so, but I, mean, without having to go too detailed into like what kind of system you're running, obviously you're not going <laughs> to reveal those details right before opening week. But, um, what is your, let's we'll say overarching philosophy offensively or defensively? Like, do you have a, are you, you know, three yards in the cloud of dust or you just want to like, you know, let the ball fly, <laughs> you know? You know, guys, and that's what's, that's what's kind of cool about being here and being a first time play caller because really in my first game in the spring, like, like, like I'm, I'm more of a run style. I'm more of a, a outside zone, inside zone, mm. some downhill power. Some, I got, I got a mixture of different things I like to do. Well, you also got to see what you have as far as personnel and see right. and utilize your personnel. And that's that's one thing that I learned over the years. And trust me, guys, I'm not I don't know everything. I do not know everything. But one thing I do know when I would watch coaches. When I was scouting and I would notice guys that really wouldn't use their personnel. And mm. so um, and, and I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm now I'm sound critical. But like so I always felt like you have to be able to adjust to your personnel as a coach. And so you have to have more than one philosophy or two philosophies. You better have a com combination to be able to do some different things. So the cool part is we've got running backs, we've got tight ends, we've got wide outs, um, we got quarterbacks, like we've got guys that can do a lot of different things. So I'm just trying to utilize a, a lot of those guys. And then defensively, you know, our D line, our D line's uh, a veteran group that's been back. We got a couple, we got several uh, young players that we signed on as D linemen that I think are going to be up and comers. Our linebacker crew is, uh, has been around. And so they're more of a veteran group. Um, we did bring in two global players as our safeties. Um, and then we have corners. Like we just got a lot of um, kind of cool parts that you can do some different things with. So um, yeah. So I think you're going to see defensively, we're see a variety of different things, a lot of different things because we can do that. And so um yeah, so without telling you everything, but we just got a lot of different things we can do. <laughs> but yeah. the, the, kind of getting back to it, I always try to play to our personnel and, and what we have. So, so two things that I mean, if you you obviously haven't had a chance to listen to to this show, but I, I think the one thing that we harp on constantly is the coaching. That's like that's the difference maker. I mean, it's a different ma difference maker everywhere, but in Japan, you can see it. You know, Fujitsu have whole raft of American experienced coaches with, you know, D1 and NFL backgrounds and at positions and everything. So Mac, because when you have this 
fixed roster that you don't really have a lot of control over, like maximizing the talent or just coaching up talent that might not have received proper coaching before can make a huge difference. Um, budgets, of course, are are a factor and, you know, teams and thing. But do you, like you said, you, you sort of talked there a little bit how you're planning long term, like, you know, looking at guys maybe two, three years down the line. So that kind of sounds like at least you're having the idea of staying in the like at least medium to long term so are you also thinking of maybe bringing in more coaches or like more american coaches or like is that going to be possible even for big blue or so no that's a, that's a great question too because we just had this conversation you know the thing i'm trying to do right now is i'm not looking at bringing in other coaches right now from okay. from from other places i'm just really tr- focused on helping our coaches like teaching our coaches what i'm looking for so what i try to do is I'll, I'll go work with the D line for a, a couple practices. Then I'll go work with the linebackers and kind of teach some drills and, and what we're doing, some techniques. Um, I, I don't, I don't, I kind of don't mess around with the back end as much. Um, mm-hmm. I do some, I do, I talk through on defense, kind of like the uh, the structure of the back end, whether we're a quarters team, whether we're cover two team, cover three, and I just try to really help our coaches and say. So I ask a lot of questions. I ask a lot of questions. I watch all the film, man. We film everything. That's one thing that's really, really cool. We got more people willing to help, wanting to help. They film everything. We've got drones. We've got all this film. So I literally sit in my apartment and I watch. So I have more film than I could ever imagine out of any place I've ever been. The NFL, the CFL, more film than all. Is it is it because IBM is on the jersey? Is it, is it is that is that part of it? That could have something to do with it too. But no, it, it's not just that. But it's yeah. the people that are wanting to help, like the help that we have, our managers and and just people just around because they just want to help. They want to learn football. And so, really, to be, I'm just going to be frank with you guys. I'm really just trying to coach our coaches to help them and give them something that they can now go. Oh, you know what? And I'll I'll, I'll give you this. So the very first practice that that I was here, the very first two weekend I was here, we had uh, two practices. So Dimitri wasn't here yet, mm-hmm. and our Massimo, great quarterback, he couldn't be here for the practice. So mm-hmm. we, I literally had our running backs. So I, I had the guys by a show of hands. Who's played quarterback before? So Keita, and I can't think of who. Are, so Keita was our one. He played uh, running back or uh, quarterback at Ritz Macon. Mm-hmm. So I was teaching quarterbacks. I'm coaching quarterbacks. Guys, I've never coached quarterbacks before. I knew I knew different drills. I knew how to how, what it looked like. So that was my first time. Well, one of our other coaches, she was helping out with something else. And I said, Coach Aska, I said, hey, I said, uh, come help me for the second practice. Come help me. So she was over there helping me do stuff and like just going through the drills. And I was teaching her the drills. And I said, Hey, Coach Aska, have you ever coached quarterbacks before? She goes, no. I said, you're a quarterbacks coach now. Wow. And so she wow. literally so, – so I gave her that opportunity just to say, hey, come learn it. Come understand what, what I'm trying to get done here. Boom, now she's coaching quarterbacks. So nice. I think it's like it, – it's, guys, it's no different than – you. Just people need opportunities to be able to right. just learn. And so now that's what you're- I'm doing. Now you're telling me this. I could have, I could have tried. I'd have gone under center. I would have been willing go. to do that. God, we need you, man. <laughs> Why would I know this? Why didn't nobody tell me this that IBM was looking for a QB in the summer? I would, I wasn't doing anything. So, <laughs> so with the guys that that you were coach, you're coaching. Did yeah. any? I mean, how many actually had quarterback experience? I mean, I'm gonna throw. I don't know if you guys, how well you guys know your NFL history, but it, you, you never know when you're going to have a, a situation much like the Colts had back in the '60s when Tom Maddy, who was a former Ohio State running back, when yeah. Johnny Unitas and Earl Morrill yep. got hurt, yep, he had to step in, and you know he hadn't played quarterback since since college. So it sounds very much, you know, I, when you were talking about that, that's what I was thinking. I'm like, oh, that sounds and, very familiar. No, and you're exactly right. But just think about just more recently. Think about the 49ers in the playoff game. When yeah. when they had when they had Purdy go down and they had uh, Josh yeah. Johnson, Josh yeah. Johnson was thirty eight right. years old, and all of a sudden he gets hurt in the game, and all of a sudden they're putting they're putting McCaffrey back there at quarterback. So yeah, yeah I forgot like, about so, that. Guys, I, I'm telling you, man, it is like that's something that I learned a long time ago. Is like mm. you got to kind of be ready, get get the next guy ready. So that's why I was telling you what I try to do with. I'm not just coaching the starters; I'm coaching everybody. 
right. yeah. everybody in what and what we try. And so just so we can prepare everybody for that moment in that time when they got to get thrown in the fire. And you never know what you can discover doing that, too. Right. Right. Um, well, and the thing is, cool. too, with f- football, it's such a team sport. And you don't know what talents people have until they're put in a position where, you know, you, you discover it. Sometimes you don't know till, you know, how many times have you seen a tight end all of a sudden become a great offensive tackle and vice versa? hundred it, percent. Yeah. It's every year. And that's, what's cool about it is all my years in scouting every year, you would see guys and go, man, I had no idea this guy could play that. You know, you know, here's a, here's a great, um, um, oh gosh, the, the, the great, the great pass rusher from the, uh, from the Vikings, um, Chris Dolman. No, the, the guy that the, was the long snapper and he played at Idaho state. Um, uh, Allen, um, on page. No, no. Uh, oh, now you, you got me right. Which now. era, which era of the Vikings? Just recent, it's more recent. It's, oh, it's, okay. uh, it's, it's 2000 early Jared Allen. Think about Jared, uh, Jared Allen. Allen. Jared, okay, Allen. Yeah. About Jared Allen. Jared yeah. Allen was from it's Idaho Bears, state well. and he was a phenomenal long snapper and he could rush too, but he was drafted, I think in the fifth round, fourth or fifth round by mm. the Kansas city chiefs as a long snapper. Okay. And then, you know, then they discovered like, man, this guy's a heck of a rusher, but like, so it's every year you find guys that like just get opportunities, you know, get exposure. And man, man, I didn't know this guy could do this. So it's pretty cool when you when you know the history, like you guys know, like you can tell you can give examples of different things. And it's no different today. Like you can you can do the same thing and, and find guys. And like I said, find coaches, find coaches that and try to help them out, because we have some phenomenal coaches, man. I, I've been so pleased by our coach, our coaching staff. Mm-hmm. Um, and just the things they're willing to do, the, the uh, amount of time that they spend during the week, you know, on Zoom calls like this and learning football and talking football, it's just, it's been phenomenal. So I'm ha- that's why I say, man, I could sit here and talk all day about <laughs> this and because I love our coaches. I love our players. I love the willingness and the passion they have just to want to learn football. And that's the beautiful thing about being in Japan, just seeing that, um, yeah. you know, the commitment. You know, from te- you know, from coaches, from players, you know, just the the total commitment to the team, and that's why I always say, John and I have had this conversation for years. You know, we're shocked that American football has never really become popular here because it exhibits all the greatest traits um, of Japanese culture: the teamwork, the commitment. Um, you know, forty. Yeah. You know, forty for sixty. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it, it was popular at in the seventies and eighties, but unfortunately, and you know, it's I wish we would get back to those days. But um, you, everything about your team is a, is a mystery. It's like to yourself too, it sounds a little bit like to to you all learn what you can do together. But like to us on the outside, uh, it's 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 as much of a mystery. I, I don't know if you saw like where our predictions went up. It's more like one of us on the gridiron Japan thing has you winning by 35 points, whereas I have you winning by one point. Like nobody nobody has any idea. I think your opponents as well, the Lions, nobody knows what they're going to be like either. So it's like it's 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 adds sort of an edge to the week uh, opening week, uh, sort of an unknown edge. It's a bit of excitement. But um, you mentioned your quarterback, Dimitri, that you brought in. So obviously yeah. he's the first Canadian to play under yep. center in Japan and that there's a connection there with you and the, and the CFL, right? You're the one who brought him in. And uh, yeah. So, you, so yeah. So one of the coaches that I, one of the coaches that I coached with, with the red blacks, uh, had been, he played at McGill university, which is a, which is a college. It's like the Harvard of Canada in Montreal. So um, uh, Patrick Burgon is his name. Patrick, we used to tell me about hey football and that talk to me about this quarterback and and Dimitri was in the the CFL draft went through the combine all that stuff and so I knew Dimitri's name through coach Pat and then over the and so just eventually I said hey I really when I talked to Kevin I, I this is where I leaned on Kevin a lot I said Kevin I said you know we talked about hey having two quarterbacks you know because Massimano has been a great quarterback here he's been phenomenal just been mm. fantastic but so my whole thought when I was when I was thinking about bringing in another quarterback, and it really wasn't, um, it, it was really just trying to bring in the right guy. It wasn't necessarily a position; it was the right guy. Well, the way Coach Pat had described Dimitri to me, 
I said, get me his number. Let me let me call this guy. And so I had just took the job. I had only talked to Dimitri on the phone, you know, several different times, but we talked for like, you know, a long, long time, hours on the phone, just about, you know, my philosophy, his philosophy, kind of where he'd been working on his PhD, really, really accomplished guy, like really smart guy. Um, doesn't have to be playing football. So I guess that's what I'm saying. Like our players, they don't have to play football. They just want to. And so I was just looking more for the right kind of guy. And so, like I said, once I got to know Dimitri a lot, I said, hey, I knew we had Massimano already here. I said, I want to bring in another guy. And they were great about it. They go, yeah, show us, you know, tell us about him. And so once they saw it, I was like, this is perfect. And so really, really excited that we have both our quarterbacks. But Dimitri's been fantastic. Um, you know, he's, he's, he's a coach. He's a, basically yeah. a, a quarterback, but he coaches too. So he's coaching up receivers. So I really wanted, that's kind of what I was getting to. I wanted to bring, bring in the right person that mm -hmm. would really give, like give, like help, let's help develop this game here. And it's already here, but just yeah. give them a little bit more just so we can give them a little different uh, avenue, a li little different outlook on things. And so Actually, uh, I, I can't even remember the last time IBM didn't have a two quarterback system. You know, I mean, y Yuki Masamoto, who you, you mentioned there, yeah. He was with uh, yet Victor Viramontes, yeah, Victor, like yeah. linebacker quarterback, and yeah. you know him and Kevin shared snaps for years. Like it had this, you know, they talk about the thunder and lightning in the backfield, but like usually that's running backs. <laughs> it's usually not quarterbacks, <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah. So it's kind of it's you know there's a little bit of a, a tradition of IBM of having that like a double punch coming out of from under center. So it'll be interesting to see you know, how that works, like what sort of combinations. You have. Obviously, like we're saying, we're not going to ask you to, to give your game right. plan away ahead of the season opener, but I, I'm fascinated in that game. I'm really looking forward to seeing what you're coming up with. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's I, I do something now, and it's, it's, it's gone for me. Oh, you know what? One thing before I forget, is Braveheart still your, your favorite film? Ha, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I could watch that. I've probably I've probably seen it 200 times. I could watch it 201 times. I could well, here's here's a brave heart piece of trivia for you. I turned down a chance to be in that. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So all of the army who is behind Mel Gibson in that, that's yeah. my unit in the Irish Reserve Army. Really? I didn't oh, know yeah. that. We, yeah, that summer they we were on so I was from age 16 to 19 I was in like what you would call the National Guard maybe in the in the states so the Irish version of that. Right. And we just finished our summer camp training camp of like a month or something and then they some somebody came in and said like oh they're they're filming there's some Hollywood film coming and they didn't say what it was or who it was or anything. It's like, you know, you can be an extra in this for an air and this big bunch of money for it. Or, and I was, as far as I remember at the time I was chasing after some girl and I was like, I'm not going to be in some movie. Forget that. You know, I, I have better things to be doing. And then like, you know, a year later it comes out and I see all the guys I know standing behind Mel Gibson, you know, beating up the English. So I was like, oh, damn it. My, yeah. as you get to know John, you're gonna you're gonna come to realize that much like the beer, the Dos Equis commercial, yeah. John is Japan's <laughs> most interesting man in the world. I no. can I can no, I, no. hey, this is no, a new no. story I'm for me too. I'm not even the most yeah. interesting guy on this yeah. podcast. Would you stop? Yeah, no, I I knew talking to you, John, just at, at the at yeah. the press conference. I was like, okay, I can talk to this guy, man. We, yeah. I can tell him stories. He'll actually listen to me and then yeah. hear your stories. It's like, yeah, it's it's really cool. I think that's the coolest thing. Like, yeah. like just people sharing. Like, yeah, I think yeah. I've been around a lot of people that don't really want to share their protective. It's like, man, why not? Like, why not share like what's your background, where you've been, all your all your experiences. Like, that's what you you look at. And you go, all this gray that I have, I've had. So I, I tell people, there's some experience in there and like i said i don't know everything but, but you know I, what you've got the coolest beard because i call it the matt dunnigan beard oh you got the matt dunnigan you bring it yeah. it's, and you, you know, it's and you know and you know matt right yes yeah, yeah matt's a, I, I, I know matt too and matt's a great guy and uh but first i saw that i'm like oh got the matt dunnigan beard the this matt is gonna dunnigan. be an awesome interview he, <laughs> hey it's, it's funny that you say that because my very first game at ottawa i was on the sidelines well, my family's back in Arizona. They're mm -hmm. watching the game live. And my daughter takes a screenshot and said, Dad, we like she and she thought Matt Dunnigan, I was Matt Dunnigan. She's like, Dad, I thought you were coaching the game. He was over in a suit and everything. They saw this bit and they thought it was me. And so here's my own daughter that thinks that I look like uh, Matt Dunnigan with the beard. 
No, I, I don't know what it is with all these like Bears coaches like yourself or Flus or like even Lavi, like these like you know the 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 uh, what was it the uh, hipster beards <laughs> becoming all all cool when you get the head coaching jobs, you know, is all the the style and the fashion comes out. Yeah, I, you know what? I, I grew this out. I, I actually grew this out about three, four years ago, and it, I let it get a little bit longer. But really, it was really to protect my skin on my face because I was getting a lot of spots with, from the sun. And yeah. I went to a dermatologist. The the girl's like, "Hey, can you grow a beard? Uh, you know, can you grow facial hair in your job?" I'm like, "I think so. Yeah." She goes, "It's a good <laughs> idea. Protect your skin." Really? So I said, "Okay." Wow. That was my excuse. That was my excuse to my wife. I said, "Babe, I gotta, I gotta grow this out." <laughs> I love it. I love it. So you've, like you said, you have a lot of film, obviously your own team. What is the, what kind of opportunities do you, have you had to like scout out the other teams or watch film on them or compared to the say, jobs you've done in the past or like how prepared can you get ahead of, you know, a six game season with so much turnover on every team yeah. each year? Like, do you, do you feel you can prepare properly for, for these teams that you're going to be facing? Yeah, and, and really, when I watch, when I study film, I usually it's not necessarily uh, a team's personnel. You try to identify like what a coach, like how uh, you know what what a coach's kind of their philosophy as you watch the film. I try to do very little research on the coach to begin with. I just try to I try to watch when I study film. I should I, I, don't, I don't even look at tendencies. I don't even look at like all the stats. I do eventually, but mm. I like to watch the film first, mm. and so that's the number one thing I try to do. I put the film on and just see what this film says to you uh, from an offensive standpoint, what they like to do on offense. Then you start to figure out like who their personnel is, who the quarterback is or who their tight ends are or receivers and, or their top guys. And then the same thing as a defense uh, standpoint, that's what's been cool about being an offensive coach. Now I try to give our offensive other coaches what I would be thinking as a defensive guy. I try to say like, Hey guys, just so you know, that's a problem. Like if mm. we can do something like that, that would be a, that would be something that I would be very nervous of as a defensive guy. So, um, but I just try to watch the film and then I'll go and we have our, our other, our coaches that give us all these stats and the tendencies and all those different things. And then I just try to match it up and see if it matches up with my thoughts. And so, so just from a, a football standpoint, obviously you've been at, on so many different NFL teams, you've been in the CFL. So it's yep. rare that we get a chance to talk to someone with, with that kind of background you know, about Japanese football, what has been, you've been here on and off for a year, you know, yep. like you, like I said, but now you're taking over, but your impressions of football in 2024 in the X league, like, do you have any overall, like overarching thoughts about like what kind of football is played or what are the strengths and weaknesses of it? Or uh, just from a sort of like a, you know, 10,000 foot view, what is, yeah, what is no, no, that's, here? that's, you know, so, so the biggest thing I try to, I try to explain to even my guys back at home, my coaches I've been with back at home, the thing that's, that's really cool. You know, we played Fuji the first game in, in the spring and then we played Fujitsu. So you, you play these couple different teams and everybody's going to be a little bit different, but you know, after playing Fujitsu and just kind of seeing their personnel, like what you said, they have a lot of coaches. Uh, they, they have a huge coaching staff. And with a lot of experience, so you can see it like you can see it. So, um, you know, I know that takes time in order to build that. Um, but but the thing that that um, I realize then you then you watch just different teams. We we did joint practices with uh, Obic. We, we practiced with Obic. So I was able to see those guys up close. Um, we joint practice with the Deers. So we just did all these different joint practices and you see. They, like the football's football. Like it's mm. no different than, than, than if I'm in the U.S. right now. Like this, like the same type of plays, the same kind of problems, the same kind of, hey, the the trips bunch set. Oh, man, that, that creates a lot of problems. Well, in the U.S. too, it's it's no, it's no football's football. So right. I just tell people all the time that like there's only so many different things you can do with football. Mm. And I really felt like our league here is very advanced. Like it's very like it's it's and I and I say it's not surprising anymore. Like I'm not surprised at how advanced our league is and the football knowledge that our coaches have, that our players have, not just not just with IBM, just around the whole league. And so really, really good football, um, well coached, very, you know, a lot of techniques that I would teach as a defensive line or stunts as a defensive line. I'm seeing it on tape. So um, it's that's what I say, like. When I watch it, it's not a lot different than it's not different than what I'm used to. Hmm. 
So that's, that's the thing I think is really cool about being out here and, uh, and just how well it's, it's, um, um, it's been coached. We won't keep you obviously too long. We're coming up on an hour. I know you have, you have more meetings with your players to come, but uh, I won't ask you like what, what your goal, like what your prediction or anything like that for the season is, but like, do you have, not even in terms of record, but do you have certain goals that you're hoping to meet this year as a team or like as an organization? You know, guys, I'm just going to tell you right now, um, I'm not that way. I, like, I don't come in and say, hey, we're going to go to the Super Bowl. We're going to go to the Rice Bowl. I don't talk about any of those things. I mean, I'm really so – I'm so, and I, I think I, I don't know if I had this conversation with you, John, but, like, I'm so much of a microscope guy. It, mm-hmm. Like, the telescope part, the down-the-road stuff, I – yeah, that's that's to me. That's going to be super. Like, no kidding. I want to be able to do that, but we got to focus on this right here and what we got to get better at. Like, if it's this practice, and so I really just try to uh, um, really uh, focus on that with our players, guys. Mm-hmm. Just focus up on this practice that we have right here. Hey, focus on this opponent that we're getting ready to play. But really, to be honest with you, I don't really focus on the opponent a lot. I know what my opponent's going to do. I just mm-hmm. try to focus on us. Like, because that's really the only control that I can that I have on our players, on our system, on our coaches. So that's it kind of sounds like, you know, Mike, you're not answering the question. I literally that's how I talk to our guys. I don't right. really I don't focus on the next opponent. I don't even pay attention to them. And, and it, I do. My focus is is more on our players than even our opponent. So. So I, that's what I'm trying to clean up. I'm not sitting there, hey, look at what this left tackle's doing. Like, look at all these different things this guy's doing. I'm looking at our 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 left end or our right end and saying, hey, here's how I can help you. Like, this is what you got to get better at. And so and I he, try to focus on that. If that makes any sense. Yeah, mm-hmm. and let me in in terms of you know, they always say it boils down to the fundamentals. Do you find yourself as a coach every day kind of keeping you know keeping those fundamentals front and you know, front and center, because I know what you're saying, you know, you don't want them to look forward ahead two days. You want to focus on the, on the here and now, because the here and now is how you win or lose a ball game. It's not thinking about what play you're going to run, you know, during Mm -hmm. the next half. I mean, you know, you're hundred percent right. And that's how I, that's how I view things because guys trust, you have to trust me on this. I used to be that guy would focus on the wrong things like too far down, not say it's wrong, but I'd focus on stuff too far down the road. And then I'd go back to the film and I'd be like, right. well, why does it look like this? Well, cause I got away from my fundamentals. I got away from like coaching, like what needs to be cleaned up right now as a D line coach, as an O line coach or, you know, whatever, what, how can I clean my guys up right now and fix, help fix them help give them what they need so they can, they can get that done right here. So it'll help us for that next step. Yeah. I found it very interesting. The stuff that you said as well about, you know, your camera people helping out and doing the the quarterback coaching and stuff. One of the things about IBM, especially under Kevin, like there was a very holistic approach. So it wasn't just about the wins and losses. It was about ensuring like the players enjoyed being football players in the team and that the atmosphere was good and, like I, I think sometimes people would criticize like IBM's focus was not on winning. It was mm-hmm. enjo- what about you know having a good not a, having a good time. That sounds bad, but like you know enjoying the football and being and like being successful in that way and yeah. maybe lacking the the killer instinct that maybe exists in Fujitsu or you know Obeik or Panasonic. So like I I would just say if you if you could say to like potential recruits some of the like some college players you've talked about maybe down the road or. Americans who might want to come out here in the future or something like what is your IBM going to be like? Like, is it like, what, where is your focus or what can, what can you give to players who would be thinking about coming to your program? What would you be know, the benefits of going to, to IBM? We'll say. Yeah. And I think the biggest thing that in, whether you want to call it a selling point, whatever, whatever you want to call it, like they're going to basically be able to experience what I've experienced. So that's, that's my whole, that's my goal when anybody, and that's why I kind of told you from the beginning, mm. I don't care if you're a starter. I don't care if you're, if you're a guy that hasn't played a lot of football, we got, we got some guys that haven't played a lot of football and that doesn't, that doesn't matter to me, but I'm going to teach you. So I'm going to teach you. I'm going to be able to show you, Hey, this is how it's coached. This is how it's done. I, I show them all my Chicago bears film guys, you know, all my, all my film that I had when I was in, uh, in uh, with the Colts, 
you know, all my old film, I've got, I've got that on this computer. So I'm able to share that with them. And so that's my biggest thing is in to bring guys in and the excitements, because to me, that's going to generate some excitement of man, this guy can actually, you know, uh, teach me something that I maybe haven't been taught before, give you a different, give them a different exposure. And mm -hmm. so I'm, you know, I kind of told you at the very beginning, I'm trying to run it as a much of a pro style system that I've been used to and totally different than, than what they were doing before. And not to say it was better or worse. That's just what I know. And so that's my whole focus is to try to give players that I want players excited to play. We trust me, John, we have fun. Like we have fun at practice, but there's nothing more fun than getting better, seeing improvements. Yeah. That's why yeah. I told you about the film. Like yeah. I'm, I'm coaching up our, our, our people, not the, not the drones cause they, they get everything, but the handheld cameras I'm, I'm literally going around and putting people in place. So it's good film. There's no player standing in the way so that we can, we can learn off of it because that's what I would do when I first started watching film. I'm like, wait, I gotta, I gotta teach them where they need to stand the, the position to be able to, to really watch tape and the players can watch it and they can learn from it. So that's, it's, it's, yeah. uh, that's the really cool part is be able to teach that. I'm yeah. getting more based just listening to you. I, mean, I think I'm, I'm really wanting to get onto that under 59ers team in the senior leagues. You can, you can, you can jump back into playing with, you know, there's still a good 20 years of tread left in your tire. I showed no, you the, the picture no. of the, the 80 year old defensive end. You know, you, you could still I get keep, out there. You have 30 years on that. Guy, I keep you know? telling John, he's got it. He's got it. He's got a strap. He's got a strap on a helmet. He's got to get the yeah. experience you of what to. it's like knocking heads. I mean, he's, he was a sumo wrestler, so he knows, yeah. but in terms yeah. of, you know, yeah. the pads and everything. Yeah. You guys need to come to our practices sometimes. And it is, one thing that like, kind of like the energy that you'll hear from me, you'll th even get like 10 times more when you come to our practice with the, yeah. with the energy, the excitement to, 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 you know, to learn, to teach and how we do things. I would love if you guys came out, man. I, I tell people all the time, come out to practice, just come out to practice. You'll, you'll, you'll have fun watching it. Yeah, I'll take you. I've been to IBM practices a few times in the past. For a lot of teams in Japan, I have to go in disguise, but usually for <laughs> IBM, I'm, I'm okay. But uh, I'll definitely take you up on that offer and I'll be out. Just just before we finish, Greg, I saw a question, Mike. Yeah, yeah. Was our that, buddy, Mike, our, one, of our, one of our good friends, Mike Tackett, who used to play for Urban Meyer, uh, a yeah. big fan of this show. Um, yeah. He posted this, and just I'll let you guys read it on the screen here. Okay, so Coach, is the significance of the small details in perfecting your craft more critical in Japan than in the U.S. due to limited practice availability? I believe you have to make every rep count that much more. One thing I learned from Urban Meyer in Columbus was that it's all about perfecting the smallest details for every rep. No, no, you are exactly right from the standpoint we, with the time that we get these guys. Now, now, trust me, we get long practices. We like we have three hour, three and a half hour practices. And that doesn't include our meeting time. So, so these guys, these guys give us so much of their time that then, mm -hmm. you know, uh, but it's only on the weekends. So you really have to utilize your time. You have to utilize your drills, what you're going to teach, the situations you're going to teach. Like that's a huge deal. So you may be, Hey, instead of being a first and second down day, Hey, I maybe have to go first and second down and red zone and tight red zone on the same day, which you're not, you, I wasn't used to that at first. So you really got to utilize that time to be able to teach everything that you want to get taught and, and be able to do that with our players because of the, just a little bit uh, amount of not time that they're with us, but the amount of days that they're that, of, of the window that we have to work with them. And funny, we should be talking about coaching here because guess who just chimed in? <laughs> oh my our God. buddy BJ. <laughs> BJ, the legend turned coach. Uh, BJ Beach is at Fujitsu, Obik Seagulls legend, now coaching at Fujitsu Frontiers. So, yeah, yeah you need to make time to sit down and talk. We'd love to pick your brain. Yeah, I figured, I I figured be, yeah, I figured BJ right now be in, in the yeah. middle of a fantasy draft or something, but I'm yeah. happy he's, he's watching us. Yeah, I That's think you're awesome. You'll, you'll be in demand. I think there'll be a lot of people wanting to, to pick your brain. So, we definitely appreciate you giving us the opportunity to do that and to enlighten and educate us about the game here and and yeah your and you know your background. So it's, I'm so excited actually about having you. I was as a Bears fan, you know, I was I was fully aware of your, of your work before you came out here. But uh, 
definitely excited to see what you can do with Big Blue. You can see the picture here behind me. It's like I took that at one of their, or maybe I didn't take it. One of my photographers took it at I love one it. of the, the championship games. IBM hasn't won one. They've come close so many times. So I think there are probably a lot of teams, a lot of neutral fans' favorites. So hopefully on and off the field, you can improve them. Your first game is on the 1st of September, 10.30 kickoff against the all mitsubishi lions typhoons are coming roaring into japan so we'll see how the weekend schedule goes but hopefully they, that game can take place and coach uh, have they said anything about the games this weekend in terms of how the weather is going to affect anything the, the only think, thing that i heard uh they said we it was like a 40 percent chance of rain um yeah. i don't and again guys that's so i'm not right i'm not, I'm not used to typhoons so it was like yeah. I, in Florida, yeah. so I, I know hurricanes but yeah. I'm not used to typhoons and the and the the amount of uh, wind and all that stuff. So, yeah, we'll we'll just have to be ready for everything. That's one thing that like I've tried to like every place I've gone um, with all the different um, you know environments, uh, weather. So we just try to adjust. We just got to be ready for anything. And and how we adjust is 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 really that's the most important thing is just how we adjust. And, and you know, so we'll have a plan in place. And and so hopefully we're playing. I think it should be okay. I think most of the type, like maybe Western Japan is going to be, I think Down my we way. should be up here. We should be okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm far one degrees though. So it'll be still warm. Yeah. I'm yeah. about Mike. I'm, I'm farther down the Island. So we're going to, we're going to, yeah, we're going to, we're going to get it wet before um, I'm down uh, near Hiroshima. Okay. So okay. we're going to, we're going to get it before you guys get it up there. So it'll be interesting. It uh, I'm like you, you know what? Uh, being from Illinois, we never had anything like this. So, but yeah. hey, I would much rather deal with type. You know, we the ground moves underneath us too. So um, I felt a few of those too. Yeah. So I'll take a typhoon any day over what you know we know eventually is gonna gonna happen. So underneath yeah. our feet. So listen, everybody who's watching, thank you very much for tuning in. And Mike, hey, can we do this again at some point? You know here. <laughs> Guys, don't like. I'm serious. You better be careful asking me this because I might be on. With, I might be on here once a week with you if you if you want to. I would. I love talking. I, as you can see, I love sharing. And well, so if I'm you're, here. you know, offensive coordinator, head coach, GM, and position coach, you definitely have space and schedule for podcast co-host as well. You know, <laughs> and, then, and then my wife's coming in town this next week. So so yeah. So that that's even going to lock. But no, guys, anytime. I love. Oh, I cool. love this. I love talking with you guys. Mm. I love talking about our players I and our coaching staff, um, just everything about it here. So anytime you guys want to do this, I, I love doing it. Just send me an email and I'll, I'll be ready to roll. Awesome. awesome. Well, hang, you know, stay tuned after we yep. get off, off the air here. We'll talk a little bit more. I'll let you go. Okay. But for everybody who's watching, everybody who's listening, thank you very much for tuning in. And on behalf of John and myself, John, Mike, and myself and Aaron, Aaron would have been here, but he was, uh, he was busy looking at film tonight. So, oh, um, he did actually yeah. send in a comment, Greg. Did you see that? I did see that. Hang on, let me yeah. pull up his comment before. Yeah, he he pulled. Uh, yeah, this was the comment he came up with earlier. That was. Yeah. That was. Love to hear such an experienced coach still harp on the importance of adjusting to your personnel. There you go, Aaron. I like it, man. Now you're talking my language. <laughs> yeah. He won't be facing Aaron this season. His team Densu is, is in next one area. Densu Caterpillars, ah. but. Hopefully he can lead them back up to the yeah. next one super and you get a chance to meet on the field next year. So and, but, and um, much like John, yeah. myself, John and myself, uh, he's Bears and you, and he's, he's also a Bears yeah. fan. So yeah. Yeah. Everyone's uh, a Bears fan. And I've converted yeah. the half the sumo world to Bears fandom. As well as, <laughs> I love it. You know? I love it. You know yeah. what? But, but, but Mike, they, he's not, you know, I, I tell John, I go, you know, being a Bears fan is like being a Cubs fan. <laughs> You know, so, and I, Mike, I'm sure you're like me. I was in, you know, when the Cubs won the World Series, it was, mm -hmm. you know, that elation. I mean, it was, it was like 85 all over again, except yeah. better. Yeah. Even more so. Tears yeah. were shed. So, oh, Greg, um, we should just, uh, before we go, we should just like the inter the flag football world championships are happening now. Oh, and, really? Uh, yeah. Noriaki Kinoshita is one of the receivers of the Japan team. He was with the Atlanta Falcons for a while. Yeah, uh, back in oh my god, was it also going on right going on right now? Is we're, we're yeah, talking? yeah, they're happening in Finland right now. In Japan, the men's and women's teams of Japan are just tearing it up. I think they were like three or four and oh each. Like the games come so thick and fast in flag football, it's hard to keep track. But 
uh, yeah, they, they they're just they're tearing it up in Finland. So hopefully, Japan can end well, up in the middle. I think it's a three day meet. I don't know how many games. Well, are, that, that ex- uh, Mike, that explains where uh, I don't know. You, you know Jim Mullen, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's where uh, Jim was flying to. Uh, I'm like, what's he going to Finland? For? Oh, that explains yeah. why he's in Finland this weekend or this, yeah, this week. Was, so. This was so cool, man. All the different, you know, the parts of the world that the, the game is going. Whether it's whether it's flag right. football doesn't matter, man. Just just to see, it's just really neat. It's neat to see that, and you know, it was really cool. Like when uh, when our team here, the under twenty, goes down over to Canada and played, you know, the U.S. and all those teams yeah. down back in. Mm-hmm was it June and uh yeah. and how well our team did here in Japan and like I had I had guys call me Mike are you <laughs> coaching that team over there I'm like no 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 but but I was just I was just at Ritz Macon Ritz Macon yeah. had some kids that were playing in it KG had a bunch of kids that were playing it I was like yeah I see these kids I said those guys better buckle up man those American yeah. guys better bu- buckle up down there because these guys hey they 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 are so they're so much better than people realize. Yeah, and getting better and getting yeah. better year by yes. year as well. That's the thing, right? 100%. Well, I mean, it's it's kind of like it's kind of like what we saw in basketball with the Olympics. Yeah. The rest of the world is starting to catch up to to the United States, and 100%. you know, with flag football now being a thing. Um, yeah. you know, I mean, the rest of the the rest of the world is you know, thankfully, is starting to catch up. You know, yeah. catch it. Catching and, and up really, to America, and and why is exposure? Just giving right. giving opportunities, exposure. Like that's that's to me the key part, man. Just exposing people to, hey, what's hey, how things are done differently, and not right. say that they're right, but it's just something different. And so that's that's the cool part about yeah, seeing people advance because I I come out here all the time. I literally was in the grocery store, the Eon, the other day. I see this guy that was six five, walking through walking through, the, and I stopped him. I said, hey, what's your name? I started talking to him. I had no idea if he could. Man, he spoke really good English. He was a basketball player. I said, man, you, can you play tight end? Like, I started like, <laughs> I said, we you know what that's like that's like how they recruited all the Hawaiians into sumo back in the 70s and 80s, just like catching them walking on the beach in Waikiki and yeah. stuff like that, you know. Here I'm in the eon in the in the cereal section. I'm talking for 20 minutes to this guy, and we got to know each other. We, uh, we exchanged numbers, like just talking, like he plays basketball over here. I was like, dude, I'll come watch you play play basketball. I said, but I'm, I'm still gonna try to talk him into playing football. So nice. Uh, nice. That's the that's what I love to hear. That's the way yeah. to go. Drag them into the, <laughs> drag them off the streets. <laughs> yes, I mean that's yeah. anybody. It doesn't matter. That's yeah. like Hanada. Hanada is a great story, man. We can talk yep. about that forever. But yeah. yeah, if sumo wrestler, great sumo wrestler, and, and now he's got a scholarship at Colorado State. Like it's yeah. cool. It's cool. Yeah. And then and I told you, Hanada's little brother, who's a yeah. sumo wrestler, he's come out to a couple of our practices. He's a high school kid, and so cool. he's learning football just to, coming out to our practices. So yeah. it's really cool. Is he well, playing? Ready, is he playing I, football? The high- he's not playing. He's he's only doing he's only doing sumo, sumo wrestler. So he just came and practiced with us, okay. and yeah. just learning the game and, yeah. and learning how you know his mom and dad let him come to practice. And so <laughs> I you know the first the first here's not knowing my personnel. The first practice we had him uh, playing linebacker, and then I'm over coaching D line. I'm like, I call him Young Hannah. Young Hannah, get over here. I said, let's come and put his hand on the ground. And he was so much more comfortable playing D line. And just teaching him all that stuff. So really, really cool to see. Never, right. hey guys, here's here's what I'm doing. I am literally helping him put his shoulder pads on and his jersey and help just how to buckle a helmet. He's never put gear on before. Yeah. So I'm helping this kid, you know, young Hanada, put on this gear for the first time. You I'm just telling little, you guys, you are literally was, starting from square zero. From square zero. Never had cleats on before. They kept calling them spikes. He had he had his spikes on, and and it was re- never caught a football before. So I'm telling you guys, it was the coolest experience for me, not for him, for me to be able to teach that. That that's I I can tell this story till I'm you know dead in the ground, like just to people and just say, man, you have no idea what it's like to be able to do that, and just how how excited I was to be able to help him. Nice. Oh, awesome. And John, I apologize. I talked over you. I didn't mean to cut you off there. No, I was just saying if he's doing that for young Hanada this year, he can do it for old gunning next year because I'm gonna get in yeah. shape. John, I've got you gotta come out, man. Now that, now that I know that the quarterback position at IBM is up up for grabs, I'm gonna be, you know, you gotta like I what was it I said once? I uh I hadn't trained in a decade and uh I 
I didn't discover that I'd lost a step. I discovered that I'd misplaced the entire stairs. <laughs> uh, hey, anyway. we'll find a spot for you. <laughs> Nose tackle and kicker. <laughs> well, no, no, no. I'm first going to put you at fullback. We're always looking for fullbacks. We'll oh, put yeah. you at fullback. We'll get you in the well, fullback. Yeah, because he's got a low center of gravity. I mean, he'd be yeah, perfect. You're, hey, yeah. you're old sumo. You got leverage. You know how to. Yeah. You know how to. You know, yeah, that's exactly what we'll do. Yeah. yeah. I refuse well, to wear a helmet, though. Oh. <laughs> uh, I love it. Yeah, All that's right. fantastic. Well, well, guys, on that note, well, let's wrap it up and uh, we will yeah. talk on the other side here. And uh, for everybody who's uh, watching, listening, um, thank you very much for uh, taking, taking your time to spend some time with us. So have a good one. And everybody who's in Japan, uh, stay safe. Bye bye. Stay safe. Thank you.